guys. This is a this is a totally different session to the other sessions that you've actually uh, um, uh, been uh, or sat in on. In that, I want it more involved. I want more involvement from you guys. So um, that's why we're sitting. But also, if you look at it, uh, there's no slide presentation today. So it's not a slide presentation facilitation process. It's about statistics, statistical um, methodologies and uh, terminologies like truth. Simple words like truth and belief. Remember in professional writing we spoke about um, uh, um, uh, um, semantics. Remember we spoke about semantics and the use of semantics. And we're gonna, we're gonna show, well I'm gonna show you guys over the next two days how important semantics is related back to the statistical situation. Why do you think, before I actually answer the question, why do you think semantics is so vitally important, especially in the South African situation, related back to the statistical environment? Why do you think semantics is so important to keep that in the back of our minds all the time? Okay, before I even ask that question, before you answer that question, who's feeling intimidated today? Statistical methods. <gasps> Would you like to facilitate on stats? Okay. Are you, who's feeling intimidated? Is everyone okay? I even see someone's got their sunglasses on. That's how intimidated they feel. Huh? No, 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 it's fine. I don't mind if you keep them on. Guys, if you, do not feel intimidated. Remember, statistical methods, the lovely thing about stats is that you, I will give you algorithms. Okay, so it's actually a learning tool. Who's in a manage, managerial post here? managerial post who would like to be in a managerial post one day everyone who would like to start their own business one day okay so remember stats help us to make decisions based on information that we're getting from research methodologies so maybe we want to uh, bring a particular product into the in, into the environment is it going to be successful is it going to be a failure how do we knew, how do we know that we start doing stats on that particular research st stats, stats correct so let's say for example we developing a product for um, young African, and my definition of African is black, my uh, young black uh, uh, um, teenagers between the, uh, between the ages of 16 to 18 years of age. And I go into um, environments in Santon and I do my research in Santon. How viable is that knowledge? Is it viable? No. So I want you to think about all of those things. When we do research, the location that we're doing that research is very, very important as well. So before I asked you a couple of questions today, but I asked you, why do you think it's so important, semantics is so important in the South African situation? Anybody want to guess? Sorry, your name again? Mandy. Mandy. Come on. You guys all know the answer. I'll give you a hint. Whose mother tongue is Zulu? Whose mother tongue is Afrikaans? Whose mother tongue is Pedi? Tswana. Corsa. Okay, um, Afrikaans, English, and so we go on. So why is semantics so important in the South African situation? Use of, study of language, but the use of words as well. So the words that we, so, so definitions of words. So to come back to the South African situation, how many official languages have we got in South Africa? 11 official languages. So when we do research, Think of Stats South Africa, when they do research, think about the census that was done. Um, we said we had some Kosa people, some Tswana people. Tswana, when you received your census letters, what language was it, was it, was it in? Was it in English? Interesting, because uh, those census letters, did everyone receive it in English? Ve okay, because I also received it in English, okay? But it's, it's very interesting because the whole idea about the South African situation is that those census letters, those census uh, questionnaires were translated into all 11 official languages. Now think about that from a semantic point of view. I don't know Kosa, I don't know Tswana, I don't know, I'm not very good at Afrikaans. But why are there grammatical errors when I translate directly from the Zulu mother tongue into the English language or from the Afrikaans language into the English language? They are, they are at the shop, correct English, grammatically structured wise. They is at the shop, he are going. Those grammatical errors, why do they take place? Because we translate directly from our mother tongue into the 
uh, into, a, into the English language. So when it comes to questionnaires related back to statistical methods, we need to translate those questionnaires into every single language that we're going to do research on. Isn't that unbelievable? And certain words, I'm sure we can have a debate about this. You said you were? Swana. Certain words in English, there might not be a word in Swana, correct? Okay. Now, that's problematic. So now I'm translating a document into Swana, but now all of a sudden the wording of that particular document's changed. Now I have to go back and change the whole document. You see what I'm saying? Because um, Joseph can't fill in a questionnaire, and I'm filling a questionnaire in English, and we're basically talking about two do totally different things. Because grass for me and grass for him mean two totally different things. Interesting, eh? So language, when it comes back to statistical methods, language is very, very important. So keep that in the back of your mind all the time. And you might say, Richard, why did you put up Radovan Kreitscher? Well, you know, why, why was that so important? Well, look, I found it very interesting. James Bond kind of uh, hit on somebody in South Africa. Conspiracy theories, but also, why is that so important? Because it, it kind of sums up the importance of knowledge and truth. When is knowledge knowledge, and when is truth truth? Which is more valuable, knowledge or truth? Okay, so I want you to you might think, whoa, Richard, that's very heavy. But I want you to think about all of these things, and that relates back to stats. And we're going to use that to help us with our statistical methods. If, everyone okay? Are you feeling a little bit more comfortable? Do you understand why we're sitting like this? I know I'm a crook today, but it's not only because of that. It's also just so that we can, we can engage with one another better. So if you don't understand something, stop me. Okay, so it's not about a slide presentation today. Because we're dealing with stats, unfortunately, there is a lot of theory that we have to get through. It is about semantics. It is about terminologies. And then from that, we can get on to uh, um, a particular algorithm. Who remembers their algebra from school? Can you remember your algebra? We're going we're gonna to deal with a basic uh, a equation tomorrow. Uh, it's a couple of equations, but, but basically, uh, um, I don't want you to panic about it, okay? I, I promise you by the end of tomorrow, everybody's gonna know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Any questions before we move on? Right, if you open up your particular module, guys, we're gonna be working through it quite extensively, but if you open up your particular module, um, how did I start the professional writing? Can you guys remember, Joseph? Can you remember, how did I start the professional writing when I did professional writing with you guys? Brandon, so you how did I start the professional writing? Can you remember? What did I say to you in professional writing? What should you do in your modules? Starting with a quote, okay, to make your PMA uh, uh, um, powerful. But from a module point of view, where should you start? Right, start with the end. Remember, start with the end. So let's just give that, because that's obviously going to give us direction. So let's look at our PMA. It's on page 3 of 5. Everyone there? Remember, I've got nothing to do with the handing in of assignments from a date point of view. So you have to speak to Trish about that, okay? I think he then uh, um, sends his banking details and then you can liaise with him. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> but that assignment, very, very important. Can I ask Nontombi, won't you read for us, please, requirement one? Discuss the example of the conflict where you can manage the example of the example. If you can manage the example of the example. Right, of instrumental value. Okay, uh, sorry, a spelling mistake there. So discuss examples. So what are they talking about? You have to give examples and you have to discuss. Remember, we spoke about action verbs. So what is discuss about? Who can remind me? Emmanuel? Discuss. What do you think you expected to do with that action verb, discuss? Zama? Were you at professional writing? No. Okay, because you also don't look familiar. Okay. Zama, what do you think is meant by the word discuss? Good, look at the critical elements, I like it. And okay, good, at the subject matter. Temba, you want to add? Discuss? Excellent, another word, elaborate also to define, give a brief definition, and then discuss the examples. So an example of intrinsic value, and ex or examples, because they actually use the plural, the examples of intrinsic value versus uh, um, uh, um, instrumental value and we're gonna we're gonna chat about that as well but you see it's very difficult to answer that question if you haven't got a definition of what instrumental value is and what intrinsic value is do you know what I'm talking about no 
You don't, because, but it's a starting point. So now we're going to be listening for intrinsic value and instrumental value. And we're going to be listening for the word value. What does value mean from a knowledge point of view? What does the word epistemology mean? <sighs> epistemology. Epistemology. Excellent. Well done, Pierre. So epistemology, epistemology. Don't panic about it. It's, uh, it's in your module. It's in your module. But epistemology, when you hear epistemology, it's just a fancy word for the study of knowledge. Okay? The study of knowledge. So that's what we're going to be doing quite in depth today. We're talking about the study of knowledge. So look at the next section. It talks about, is knowledge of greater value than true belief? Once again, look at your action verb. Discuss how this can impact on statistical research. So is knowledge of greater value than true belief? So when, do we, when, can, we, when can we say that we actually know something? Once you've evaluated and considered all aspects, and I suppose what you mean there, correct me if I'm wrong, this is what I'm understanding what you're saying, that you've tested it, correct? Okay, and then it becomes knowledge. So what's that word? You've done it in a couple of modules before. What's that word that, that Bianca's talking about? Ratiocination. Looking at all those different angles. So ratiocination, yes, I like that. But is that knowledge then? Think about Albert Einstein. Theory of relativity. Is it a fact? It's been stated as a fact, correct? For many, many years we've known it as a fact. How many years was it a fact that the earth was flat? And if you sail too far, you fell off the edge. It was a fact, correct? In the 16th century, that, that, wasn't, that was knowledge. It was a factual statement. Because scientists told the people that. So my point is, is knowledge truth or is truth knowledge? Well, okay, and this is the, you might think, whoa, Richard, you've lost me. But just keep the, all of these ideas in your mind. And that's why I put up Radovan Kreitscher. Because now it's knowledge. Someone tried to kill him. But is that knowledge? Or is it, is it misleading knowledge? And if knowledge is misleading, is it knowledge then? Whoa. Okay. Truth. So all of these things. And that's what, that's what they're basically talking about there. Don't, don't worry if you're lost. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go through this. But remember, it's you coming up with the answers. And it's you justifying your answers. And integrating as well. What other modules have you done before this particular module? Give it to me. Professional writing. HR. HR. Business management. Business management. Management, leadership and development. Management, leadership and development. So are, the, are those all isolated modules? No. We're looking at the integration. All of those modules are integrated with stats because through this statistical methods that we're going to do today, it's going to show us how we can uh, um, uh, gain information gain knowledge and from that knowledge we actually uh, can can um, make certain decisions okay everyone everyone okay with that all right guys so that's the first part of the of the requirement look at the mark allocation on the right hand side 15 marks so remember you know where we're going now so we're talking about all of those words those semantics knowledge truth belief true belief instrumental value intrinsic value so we're going to be talking about all of those things requirement two can I ask um simpiwe won't you read for me please Right, guys, hopefully we can get to that, that, that today as well. Because obviously from a statistical point of view, questionnaires are very important, correct? Because that's how we get our information, correct? So Stats South Africa, do they just thumb suck their information? No. They have to put questions, questionnaires out there and there's certain ways that they get their information. Who listened to the news yesterday? Who listened to the news yesterday? Stats South Africa was on the news yesterday. Why were they on the news? There was a gent from, I forget his name, from Stats South Africa and he was on 702 and he was on CNN, um, um, NCA last night. ENCA. You don't know? Guys, you must watch the news. If they were talking about the CPR, what is the CPR? Consumer Price Index. And why are economists yesterday, they were saying, oh, they're so happy and business was so happy about the CPR. Why? 
Okay, you guys must remember, you, you must look at your news, okay? They were happy about the CPI because the CPI came in at 5.5%. Have you guys done economics yet? Okay, when you do economics, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about the CPI index. And the CPI index is very important because it shows um, how much our, 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 um, our rand is worth in the actual marketplace. Has it depreciated? Um, has, our, has our purchasing power parity increased or decreased? And invariably it's decreased. Why? Because things like petrol and food and all of these items have gone up. Anyway, the CPI has gone up or was 5.5%. And economists were expecting it to go up to 5.8%. And another gent came on and he says, what, what are we talking about? Knowledge and truth? He says, is this knowledge? How valuable is this information? And then they had the gen from Stats South Africa coming on. And do you know how they draw up the CPR? They draw up the CPR from a basket of goods of approximately 400 goods, 400 to 600 goods. And this particular gent came on and he said, no, it's not really real. It's not real information. Because if you look at that basket of goods, who eats millipop here? On, let's say on a daily basis, millipop. Okay, Millipop will be one of those one of those items in the basket. Okay, who eats um, who drinks line lager, for example? Who uses this kind of petrol? And if you look down the basket, you might you might say this isn't real information for me. But unfortunately, Stats South Africa has to start somewhere. You with me? So this was the whole debate, and it was all around stats. How do we draw up stats? If we draw up stats in that way, how relevant is the stat? Another big thing I want you to remember with regards to stats is time. Think about, have I spoken to you about the Gini coefficient? Okay, the Gini coefficient measures, measures the disparity between the poor people in a country and the wealthy people in the country. Just look at my hands. Do you, do you see that disparity? So if the poor people have got no money and the rich have got all the money, then the Gini coefficient is going to be very close to one. It's a ratio. So it might be 0 0.9. If that is balanced, in other words, you've got a very strong middle class, then your Gini coefficient will most probably be around 0 0.3 which is great because it means everyone's got money and your middle class is very, very strong, correct? But now from a statistical point of view, we have to ask ourselves, when we get information about the Gini coefficient, there's many variables. Do you know what I mean by a variable? What do I mean by a variable? Factors, good, I like that. Factors, information, observations. In stats we talk about observations. So there are many observations that come into those equations. Now the problems with some statistical information is by the time we get the figure, 55%, it's already outdated. Just think about that for a second. Because it's taken us five months to get the information in. You with me? Think about from, from, a, from an aviation point of view, from a weather point of view. If you're flying a plane and I say to you, okay, we've done stats on the weather and the weather, it should be like this. And you're flying and you hit a, and I said it's gonna be clear, but my information is old and now you're flying and you hit, a, you hit a thunderstorm, are you in trouble? Well, there's a possibility you're gonna be in big trouble. So that's, a very, that's been one of the main disadvantages and one of the main, uh, uh, main arguments against, against stats is that often when the information is correlated and uh, it's made use of, already that information is outdated. Okay, so just, just think about that when, we, when, we, when we're dealing with, uh, with stats. How real is that information? All right, guys, everyone okay? So that question two, that requirement two, do you see it's very, mo very much mode two about the workplace, about making that information real, about gaining information that is relevant to your workplace and taking it back to the workplace. Look at requirement three. Can I ask Emmanuel, won't you read for me, please? Determine and show the main mode and media for the group and ungroup data for the age of person that you interview for your survey not the class activity. Okay, we're going to do a class activity around this as well, but it's not the class activity, so you're going to do it by yourselves. <laughs> now, who knows what to do there? It's fine, eh? You guys all know how to do that, eh? Not at all. You don't understand me. You don't understand mode. You don't understand media. That's fine, but we know where we're going. So that, hopefully, we can get to that most probably tomorrow morning. Okay, look at the next one. Requirement four. Can I ask Simpiwe? Uh, Simpiwe's red. Can I ask, uh, what's your name again? Mary Ann, won't you just turn it? Mary Ann, won't you read for me, please? Compare and report the findings of the survey is conducted. Right, a report. So now we've conducted the survey, but if it just stays a survey, is it going to be beneficial? No, we have to conduct a report. So I'm going to teach you how to do that as well tomorrow. And then requirement five, Brandon, won't you read for us, please? Does the information of an independent and independent, 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 independent
comparable to your organization or from your research, research for which you can assess the records from the past 10 period. All interviews conducted and do a simple linear regression analysis. Okay, so we're going to learn about linear regression. Can you remember linear regression? Who remembers linear regression? Come on, aviation student. You should know what linear regression is. Can you remember what that is? Woo! Straight line, well done. Can you remember straight lines in school? Linear regression is a fancy word for straight lines. Remember when we had our axes at school? We had, what is this? I'm not a Catholic priest blessing you. What is this? What is this? This is your, this is your Y axis, this is your horizontal is your X axis. So vertical axis, X axis. And when we did linear regression, it was a straight line. And we learnt about the Y intercept, remember? And the, what is this thing? Remember it was either steep or it was excellent, the gradient or the slope. So that's what, that's what we're going to learn about tomorrow. So linear regression, if we can determine the slope, we can determine the Y intercept, then we can find out x, in other words, an unknown variable. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, sorry, let me just correct myself. If we, if we can determine the y-intercept, determine the, the slope and gradient, and we know x, then we can determine y, which we're going to get to tomorrow. Okay, so we need to have all those variables. Remember, in maths or in stats, you can only work out one unknown at a time. If you've got two unknowns, it's a problem. So you can only work out one unknown at a time. All right, guys, everyone okay with that? Everyone, everyone feeling okay? You know where we're going. Right, <clears throat> and you know how the rest of the assignment is made up. Brandon, you're looking a little bit nervous there. Okay. Are you okay? No, I'm good. I'm good. You're good. You're thinking, oh, I don't know what to write. Don't worry, don't panic. We're going to do, we're going to go through it one, one, uh, uh, one section at a time. Guys, I love this particular module because it is very interactive, but just look at the table of contents. The table of contents is very, very specific. It's very, very specific. Just, just uh, I'm going to give you just a minute. Just, just go through there. And it gives you a lovely map, a lovely guide of exactly where we're going to go. Can you pick up where some of your questions are going to be? Look at that. Theme 2, it talks about issues in questionnaire design and surveys. Question, your requirement 2 was about? Drawing up a, and designing a questionnaire, correct? You see that? Look at theme three, preparation of primary data. That's basically our mathematical equations and all those unknown variables. Look at theme four, understand and analyze statistical data. That's basically drawing up your report. You see how user-friendly the module is, guys? Okay. And if you turn the page, um, theme seven, the research report. Once again, a follow-on of that report that is, that is needed. We've done the research, what do we do with it now? How do we draw up a report? Okay, how do we make, the how do we make that information uh, um, valuable to us or meaningful to us? Okay, right, look at the, look at the first thing, learning. Yes. Yes, sure. Yeah. So on this one, um, just one um, how is it a separate question? That's your, that's your question. Definitely not. Remember from your professional writing? I said to you, that's why I haven't even gone on to st 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 um, just give the wording again. Description of application process. Remember that's your flow. That's your logical flow, your flow, your ratiocination of your whole assignment. So I will give you an overview, uh, uh, over, overall mark on how your, how your assignment flows. Um, I'll be looking very closely at your summaries. In other words, another word for summary, conclusions, and your introductions. Remember you've got, um, I think it's four, four uh, how many requirements? Four, eh? Five requirements. So you're going to have, in theory, five different introductions and five conclusions because they don't really flow into one another. You with me? So that description and application process is not separate. I will pick it up throughout your whole assignment, throughout those whole, or, or, or throughout those five requirements. Okay, answer your question. 
for all other PMOs. You remember pro pro uh, professional writing, I said to you, ask your facilitator, but as far as I know, there's no facilitator that asks for a separate section on that. Okay, you can ask <coughs> my finance modules, my economics, business management, and the stats. It'll be picked up in your whole assignment. Okay, remember your 70 marks, the 70 marks, the requirement one to five, what does it make up? 70 marks, that is your theory of your assignment. The other 20 marks is professional writing, description of application process, and the other 10 marks. And then the other 10 marks, remember those are those free marks that you get. Isn't that lovely? Mm -hmm. Okay, and we chatted about that. You, you guys don't want me to chat about that, eh? you know about that. Correct? You know about that, um, Sasha? Yeah, you know about that. Okay, so the two marks, the three marks. Joseph, are you okay? Are you sure? Okay, so remember the big, the big thing in any PMA at Da Vinci is the 70 marks, that's the theory based. The description application process and the structure of the response, those 20 marks will be around professional writing. So description of application process is also how you cite your, cite your, um, your references as well. So be careful of comments. Remember we chatted about this in professional writing? They say the unemployment rate in South Africa is 65% and you carry on writing and you don't give any reference. Is that correct? The unemployment rate in South Africa is 65%? One learner actually put that in. But he never ever cited that particular reference. And he said to me, no, no, it's true. I got it from this. And I said, okay, show me. And he had misrepresented that information because it was an unemployment rate um, in a particular age group in South Africa. You with me? But it wasn't a total unemployment rate. Imagine our unemployment rate was 65%. Guys, it would be chaos. Okay. So just remember, don't misrepresent statistical uh, data. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? Um, I just want to pick up on the learning objectives, some lovely words that I want you to try and use in your module as well. We're on, we're on page seven, I'm going to ask Zama, why don't you just read for us? Oh, statistical is used to collect, to collect organize, analyze and interpret that. Right, stop there. That's basically the summary of this module over two days. That's why we need stats, that's why stats are so important. Look at those words guys, collect, organize, analyze and interpret. What is the big downfall of those four words? I have already discussed it with you. Truth or knowledge, yes, but there's a big downfall. What is the big downfall of those four words? Thank you, time. It takes time to do that. So when we get that information, how relevant is that information to us? I'm not saying it's not relevant, I'm just saying we need to ask ourselves that question. Okay, everyone okay with that? Okay. And that's why it's so very important if we're dealing with stats or if we offer a statistical piece of uh, uh, information in our, in, our, in our assignments, we need to look back at the copyright section of that information that we've actually uh, referenced. So if you've got a stat and you look at the copyright of the book and it's 2002, is it outdated? Yes, it's outdated. You need to find a more relevant uh, um, uh, uh, piece of statistical information. Remember I chatted to you about the Gini coefficient? That's, what's, uh, that's one big downfall of the Gini coefficient. It takes, there's so many variables, so many observations that come into the Gini coefficient that when it's, um, when it's finally attained, often it's taken such a long time that uh, um, how useful is it? I'm not saying it's not useful, but how useful is it? Okay, so just be aware of that. Right, can I ask uh, Brandy, are you right to read? Uh, sorry, uh, Bianca. Bianca, are you okay to read? If you're not, just let me know. Eh? Okay. Okay, very important. Okay, I love looking at the learning outcomes because if you can say after two days that you that, that that you can understand these learning outcomes, then obviously uh, you've achieved the 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 learning that the that the module was required to actually give you. Can I ask Sasha? Why don't you read for us, please? <coughs> when you have completed the, the statistical method module, you'll be able to understand some of the 
practices describe a business environment through the relationship of events as they relate to the micro, market, and macro environment. Understand issues that exist in questionable design. Prepare primary data. Understand and analyze statistical data. Use statistical packages and methods for data analysis. Use computer packages for data analysis. Okay, isn't that lovely? So we've got computer packages that can actually work out this particular data for us already. Think of think of think of Excel, guys. Okay, from an Excel point of view, if you know that we've got a variable and that variable is changing by five every single time, we can add that computation into Excel, correct? And even if we've got another particular equation that we're working with, we can get computer programs that will make that easier for us. But it's very, very important to understand the process, correct? Because if all of a sudden we're looking down a list of figures and we see, okay, 2, 3, 4, 7, 222, 8, 9, 10, 222, something, something's wrong there. Let's go there, go there and see, was there an incorrect uh, uh, entry? Or did the, uh, was, 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 there, was there a software glitch? Why is that variable so high compared to all the other variables? Okay, so we need that understanding. So a lot of people argue the point, why do we have to learn about stats? We've got computers to do it for us. But we need to understand the background knowledge of that. Does that make sense? Okay, guys. Every, everyone okay with where, we, with where we're at? Okay, clear, clear, clear direction. All right, guys, I just, uh, very important. I want us to look at the learning map. The learning map is important for me because it also just gives us a direction of where we're going. Can I ask Emmanuel, won't you just look at the first one? It says theme one. Right there, yes. The, uh, the importance the of... The learning map below will guide you through the complex engine in this model. Team 1, the importance of statistics in business, statistical terminology, types of data, data source, the value of knowledge, what is knowledge... Okay, just hang on a second. You see, that's why I wanted you to read it. So it's not going from left to right, okay? I want you to, uh, okay, no, that's why I wanted you guys to actually look at it very, very carefully. Because from a questionnaire point of view, this is how certain questionnaires are designed as well. And we cannot make the assumption that somebody will know that when we end the line, we go to the bottom. Because how do we read? How do we read? We read from left to right, correct? So that's exactly how Emmanuel read. So we cannot make the assumption that because there's an arrow there, the person's going to go to the bottom. Once again, how relevant is that research material going to be? So do not make assumptions when, we, when we're drawing up questionnaires. So once we get to data sources, we get data collection methods. <laughs> and that kind of sums up exactly what I've just said. So if we're collecting that data in a different way, how relevant is that data? Okay. Uh, theme two, issues in questionnaire design and surveys. What is knowledge? Look at that, guys. What is knowledge? When we, when, we, when we came to this class, I think everybody in this class thought that they knew what knowledge was, correct? But often, we have a knowledge base, and we say, right, that's knowledge, and maybe it's disproved. Who's heard of the God particle? The God particle? You know that it was, it was a, a God particle was identified? Uh, I'm, I'm not a physicist, okay? I don't understand enough about this, but it just blew me away. And I think it was around last year in, um, in Switzerland. I think it was in Switzerland and in Paris. And what they did is they sped up a particular particle. I think it was an atom or a proton. And they discovered another particular particle, and they, they termed this particle the God particle. And literally what they were saying is that it disproves Einstein's theory of relativity. As I said, I'm not a physicist, but this just blew me away because... Why did it blow me away from a statistical point of view? Because we think that that is our knowledge base. It's been proven. But just because it's proven, does it make it knowledge? It's kind of a, kind of a, weird, a, a weird concept. Eh? Okay, so just think about that. Okay? So that comes back to what is knowledge? The value of knowledge, epistemology. Remember epistemology? Don't get confused with that. Pierre, what was it again? The study of knowledge, okay? So cultures and statistics. Look at that, guys. With knowledge, we have to look at cultures. We have to look at uh, um, societies as well. We, we, we might even have to look at religious structures as well and belief structures. Um, guidelines for asking questions. Questionnaire construction. Interviewing methods. Guys, imagine if I had to draw up a questionnaire and you were intimidated your, by, by your boss, okay? 
So now you're highly intimidated by your boss, female or male. And I draw up a questionnaire scenario and we come into a room like this and let's say you've got five bosses and you sitting here and your five bosses are there. How relevant is that information going to be? And I'm asking you questions about... Well, I'm asking you information, I'm drawing up a questionnaire and I'm gaining information from you but your five bosses are sitting there. Is that information going to be valid? Uh, valid? Definitely not. So that's what guidelines for asking questions, that's so very important. Often researchers get that horribly wrong. It's a simple thing, but they get it hor horribly wrong. Why? Because from a location point of view, that's very, very important. Am I going to, honest, am I going to answer truthfully if I know that there's a chance I'm going, to get, I'm going to lose my job? Okay, so once again, how relevant is that, is that knowledge then? So that, that, that's a very important section that we're going to be looking at. And then um, questionnaire construction, also very important. In other words, the types of questions we're going, to, we're going to ask. And interviewing methods, well, I kind of explained that. And then theme three, preparation of primary data. And we're going to talk about primary data. And then theme four, understanding and analyzing statistical data. And that's your requirement uh, um, four and five, where you talk about that linear regression. And then measures of central location, apply data analysis in theme six. And then theme, six, uh, theme seven, that very important one for the, uh, I think it was your fourth requirement, compiling the research report. Make sense, guys? Okay. And then you guys have dealt with these words before. You know, you, you know the next page, eh? From a research point of view, you know all of these words. But the big word that I want to come up, I just want to remind you guys of is that ratiocination. Can I ask Brandon, won't you just read me the definition of ratiocination, please? Ratiocination is the logical region that is considered for optimal and possible things that may result in a Okay, look at that word, guys. May. May result. It doesn't mean it will, will result. Look at that other word, logical. You've got a husband or a wife here or a partner, okay? You know what I'm talking about. Have you ever tried to explain something to your partner, your wife or your, your friend that makes perfect sense in your head, that's logical to you, and your wife goes, huh? <laughs> Some people, you know what I'm talking about. So that logical, we're going to talk about that logical reasoning and uh, why it's so important to brainstorm from a logical, uh, a logical process point of view. Okay, so what's logical to us, we cannot just say it's logical to us, therefore it's logical. We have to test that logic and we have to uh, uh, open ourselves up to an editing process. Who edits that, that, that logic for us? Us. Do we, do we edit it? Who edits it? Preferably somebody else to test how, logic, uh, how logical that logic is. Okay. All right, guys, theme one, the importance of statistics in business. Now, before we look at this theme, Let's just look at some, some ideas. Why do you think, before we even look at the material, why do you think, Sasha, why do you think stats is so important in business? What do you think stats gives us? Um, it drives the information knowledge, the management information knowledge. It drives the management information, I like that. Some people? Oh, you're going to say the same thing? You're going to say something? No. But remember, from a business point of view, what do we want to get from the stats? What do we get from, want to get from the stats? So your name, just turn your name tag. Just turn your name. Uh, Temba, sorry, what do we want to get from the stats? Yeah, I think uh, it assists us with the uh, possible opportunities or challenges as, as, as a business. For instance, um, uh, in a, an environment where uh, that is a in a population of about 1,000 uh, 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 people, we cannot, not, uh, as a business, maybe generate what uh, uh, generate, I mean, let me say 1 million, 1 million, that does, does, does not make a business, business sense. <coughs> uh, uh, for instance, I know that, 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 uh, that uh, China, China, every time we say, say we want to make business as, as South Africa with them, and we we'll always say, we we'll say, are you having to use can you provide us a swimming ground? I mean, uh, 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 pop or peaks per month, and you know that, that, know that those are the challenges that are actually getting. So, so I think it's that 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 it
Okay, no, but guys, please, please don't be scared to offer insight. Okay, but uh, Temba, thank you very, 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 uh, very much for that. But just one thing, Temba said, and I let him, uh, I let him talk, but he said, I know that. What is the problem with a statement like that, Pierre? He's, 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 so, he's very, very sure of himself instead of suggesting. Yes, and from an elaboration point of view and from a citation point of view, you need to, you need to cite it. So if all of us make that mistake. I make that mistake as well. I know that. Okay. You, we actually know very little. But we have to elaborate. We have to back it up. with. So we have to substantiate what we're saying with factual information. Okay. So remember that from a PMA point of view, be careful of statements, I know that. Okay, back it up, substantiate your particular answers. But thanks very, very much for that, Temba. So uh, definitely all of this comes into being with regards to business. But the one thing I want you to remember, how does stats help us in business? It helps us to make decisions. It's as simple as that. It helps us to make decisions. And our decisions, in theory, then become less riskier. Would you agree with that? because we've got valid information at our fingertips. And as a result of having, it doesn't mean we're not gonna make risky decisions, but it just means we've got something hardcore to work on. And we're gonna talk about Coca-Cola, where they actually drew up a questionnaire, and they thought that they were testing a particular um, idea in people's heads, but in actual fact, it put everything on its heads. But we're gonna, we're gonna chat about that later, later today. So we're gonna do case studies around Coca-Cola as well. How people think they know what they're testing, but at the end of the day, they actually realize that they've, that they've tested something else and that the research has actually failed. Guys, I also want us just to pick up this, pick up on this um, IBMQ. Have you, have you heard about of the acronym IBMQ before? IBMQ in any of your modules? You haven't dealt with it in economics? or You have business management, yes. So business management, remember Richard Maponia? Mm -hmm. who, uh, who did business man management with you? Carl, okay. So from a business management point of view, remember you did Richard Maponia, the defiant entrepreneur, and you learned about the IBMQ. What was IBMQ again? Say that word again. Integrated. Integrated. You see that integration of business management quadrant. And what was it? It was broken up into four quadrants, and we had direction, it was functional, it was the macro environment, and then you had a change driver that was changing all the time. Okay, so this isn't something new, so I can assume that all of us have dealt with this before, correct? Is that a good assumption to make? Everyone okay with that? So where does this, this is, I'll say that again, where does statistical methods fit into the IBMQ? Below is a diagram, and that's your IBMQ. Statistical research will typically be performed by the macro environment leg of the IBMQ. So the macro leg, so that's where we're going to be looking at. That macro, what is macro again? We've got micro and macro. Macro is large, guys, not small. Remember, macro, micros from the Greek word micros. Micro, micro, small, macros, big. Okay? So, macro <coughs> is the bigger picture, the bigger economy, those bigger effects on business. Think about what's happening in the world today, guys. So, from a, a, a stats point of view, macro, a perfect example of macro that was mentioned on the news yesterday, would be the CPR. How does the CPR affect people? And I just want to show you a particular article here that I um, got from yesterday. This was an article from, I think it was this morning, yes, the 24th. And look at what they say here, guys. It says, can I ask, uh, Pia, won't you read for us? Okay, thanks. Mandy, won't you carry on? Negative 0.3%. Okay. Now, who's lost? If we don't understand how to interpret that information, it's not going to help us, correct? But from a CPR point of view, we need that information, and that's what Stat South Africa uses to show how is that. Remember we spoke about the Gini coefficient? So how are those poor people at the bottom of the scale? How is this going to affect them? 
Think about it logically. If something goes up, does it affect you in a bad way, Miriam? Pass the petrol, does it affect us? It does. But what does it do to the poor person at the lower end of the economy? Does it affect them more? It affects them even more. And what they've done here, they've actually said that Stat South Africa, they've changed the way they they, 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 they researching this particular material. Why? Because they've placed a heavier weight on, look at this guys, on food and petrol. Think about a poor person. How do they generate an income? Invariably by taxi, correct? Um, we can actually save petrol by how? By maybe getting a lift with someone, correct? Yes. We, we, we could actually save, uh, uh, save uh, uh, money that way, but we also get salary increases. Maybe it's not in line with the CPI, but we get salary increases as well, and we're earning more. But the person at the lower end of the scale, if they get a salary increase, what is it? Invariably maybe 10 rand extra a day, correct? How, how is that 10 rand eaten up by the petrol price, et cetera, et cetera? So they're asking, the, uh, asking these questions all the time about, about statistical information. So what they say, they say economists have um, expected inflation to quicken to 5.7% year on year and to 0.5% month on month. Peter Worthington and, uh, and an analyst at APSA Capital said it is very good relief that the South African Reserve Bank should feel very happy with obviously the headline number is below consensus expectations and why they're saying that is they're saying that next year there's a, put, uh, there, there, there's a possibility that we're going to have a red, uh, reduction. Who's that? Who will do that in the um, home loan percentage? Who's that? Jill Marcus. So there's, a, there, there's potential that she's going to actually drop that um, interest rate. Is that good or bad? Right, economists always say, on the one hand, Cyril, but on the other hand. Okay, because they never ever can say it's good or it's bad. There's always, if the interest rate goes down, it's good, but it's also bad. So there's, there's, there's a speculation in the market all the time and it relates back to stats. So how relevant is the stats? But just, I, I just want to show you how Stat South Africa is starting to change the information related back to the Gini coefficient. And furthermore, the core number, which is CPI less food, look at that guys, CPI less food, energy and petrol, energy, electricity, eh, guys, that has also decelerated, which suggests that there is very little path through from the RAND, uh, uh, RAND depreciation so far. Worthington, however, said that the inflation relief isn't going to make or break an interest rate decision. But if we look at the spring, sorry, the string of inflation numbers that we have had recently, they have been quite subdued relatively and it reduces the chance of a rate hike. We have always said we don't think the central bank is going to move rates, that they are going to stay on hold, but after the RAND started to depreciate, there was a risk that they would be forced to hike rates if there was a big inflationary impact. And it, it carries on, you guys can go online and you can read this article further, but they, they go on to say, you know what, we're looking at our statistical information and we, we, we're putting a heavier weight on food and petrol. Does that make sense? Okay, especially from a poor person point of view. Because if we say 5.5% increase, how does that affect the poor person lower end, at the lower end of the economy? I don't want an answer, I just want you to think about the question. Okay, and that's how we formulate decisions. Remember from a semantic point of view, I'll never, never forget this. Um, uh, I had a guy working for me and we went into a shop and I said to him, he wanted to go buy bread and gave him money and he went in and he got, bought, bought bread. And I said to him, why did you buy this bread? This is like a cheaper bread, why don't you buy the more expensive bread? And it was, there was a seven cents difference between the low, seven cents, okay, it was a while ago. There was a seven cents difference between the two loaves of bread. And I said to him, just go buy the other bread, this is, this bread isn't nice. I said, it goes stale after a day, da, 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 da. I said, buy the other bread. And he said, no, no, no. He says, you white guys, sorry, racial con. He said, you white guys, he says, for you, seven cents is nothing. He says, for me, seven cents means eating tomorrow or not eating tomorrow. Isn't that unbelievable? So semantics again, okay? Related back to the CPR. So that 5.5%, what is it going to do to the lower end of the economy? You might say, but Richard, we're talking about decision making in the business world. I'm not worried about the person at the bottom. We need to worry about the person at the bottom, correct? Because it's going to affect our business. Remember that spin-off, okay? Who's worried about SAA? Who's worried about SAA? Who's worried about SAA? It's a lost cause, it's this and that. All of us should be worried about SAA. Why? They've just bought five new air, bu air buses. Who bought five new air buses? I did. 
because I'm the taxpayer, correct? So when we talk about SAA and that, often in business we say, no, those stats don't, don't uh, impact on us. Ah, they do. In your business management, when you learnt about Richard Maponia, did you learn about those acronyms, um, SMART, SWAT? What, 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 am, what am I talking about, Simpia? SMART? Strengths, strength, uh, threat, 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 threat. Right, 100%. So with stats, we look at that all the time. Okay, from a strength, from a weakness point of view, we, we acquire knowledge and we make a decision on that knowledge that we've, that we've acquired. And uh, SWAT, for example, what does it stand for again? S is? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Who's learned a, pest a pestle before? Pestle? Have you, have you done it before, before as well? Sorry, there's no, there's no flip chart paper, yeah? But pestle, how was pestle sp uh, um, spelt? P-E-S-T-L, correct, eh? Correct. So P-E-S-T-L, correct? E-L. E-L, right, it's changed. If you look at books from 2009, they spell PESTL, P-E-S-T-L. If you look at uh, uh, copyrights now, 2010 onwards, uh, I might be a little bit out here, but uh, 2010 onwards, PESTL is spelled with a second E. Why? Environmental. The first E was economics. Remember, let's just go through it again. PESTL stood for? Political, economical, social, technological, and legal. And that second E is now environmental. Who's got DSTV here? If you got everyone. Okay, but I don't want to make that assumption. That's why I'm asking the question. If you go onto DSTV, you press OK. You go down to weather and news, correct? You go onto news, and you've got all those different titles, correct? You've got um, uh, local news, uh, Africa, the world. You know what I'm talking about. Now, literally five months ago, you guys can shoot me down here, but literally five months ago, what happened? Five months ago, you had local news, you had South Africa, you had the world, and then you had business, and then entertainment, that was it. Now look at what's happened. If you go, you, go, you get business, you get entertainment, you get green, and you get technology, correct? Because of Pestle. Think, think, just, just think about that, guys. How, do, how are those areas in a, a society affecting business? We need all of those areas. And that's where our strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities come from. Can I just show you an article that I downloaded yesterday? Because a lot of people think, oh, in bad times, the economy isn't doing that great, correct? Therefore, business is suffering. Who would like to start a business, let's say, in Egypt? That would, that would be a good venture. <laughs> Come on, guys. Isn't there money to be made in Egypt? You think so? Well, let's see. Let me see if I can get this article for you. Well, uh, it was in the news yesterday, and they, they, they uh, brought out a new term, entrepreneur. Everybody know what an entrepreneur is? Correct, entrepreneur. They called them Egyptianers. Egyptianers. And what the article was about, it was very, very interesting. And what the article was about was um, this young gent, Kashani, I think his name was, 27 years old. He started a business venture in Egypt. And in these bad times, think of your SWAT, think of Pestle. Okay? In these bad times, even in bad, bad times, there are opportunities to be made. And what he did in Cairo, anybody seen pictures of Cairo? What happens in Cairo? Okay, fights, but also what happens? There's traffic jams, correct? So he, he formulated this business and he, and he started a, a, a delivery service. And just, with, just look how simple he made it. He just uh, bought scooters. And because the economic times are so bad, the people who are supplying him with, uh, so the creditors who were supplying him with the scooters, they usually had to pay within 12 months, but they extended the loans to 36 months. So how's that going to help his cash flow? Interesting, hey? So he brought out orange scooters. And apparently in Cairo, they're very, very, and his business is called Mashawir. And even in these bad times, he managed to get $4 million from investors. And investors are now flocking to, e to Egypt as a result of the opportunities that are available there. So often we look at an environment and we say, oh, it's bad. But if we look at statistical information, so he looked at stats, he looked at the research and he said, you know what, there's a need for this. If I can fulfill this need, there's a business opportunity there I can tie into the market. Okay. And he's now even got apparently a high-speed boat. Because you know Egypt's on a water, a water plane as well. So he now uses a high speed boat and he's got these orange scoo scooters. Unbelievable, huh? Eh? So that's a perfect example of SWAT 
and pestle working hand in hand. Right. So very important those 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 learning those learning outcomes. Okay, IBMQ. Everybody understand that you understand your wraparound map. You understand where we're going. And now I want to just look at some some terminologies, guys. So we're on page um, page eleven, and I just want to look at one point two, and it says the importance of statistical methods in business. Very briefly, can I ask Pierre? Won't you just read for me? The subject of statistics forms part of almost every management education program offered by universities, universities of technology, management colleges, and various private learning institutions. Why? Why is that so important for us to acknowledge that? Because if we want to be uh, um, uh, um, successful in business today, we need to understand stats. Because anybody that talks business talks stats. Agreed? So if we don't understand, if we're in a meeting and all of a sudden statistical information is mentioned or research methodologies are, 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 um, are mentioned and we don't understand that, then we are, we're obviously going to fall, fall behind. So we, we need to have some understanding of statistical methods and methodologies. Agreed? Okay. Can I ask you to read the next one, please? M uh, management decision making. Management decision making. The reason for this is found in the term management decision support system. As decision making is central to any manager's job. Okay, guys, and that kind of sums up these two days for me. We're doing stats so that we can make business decisions. Okay, it's all about decision making at the end of the day. Correct? We don't just have all of these questionnaires, etc., etc., and it sits in a drawer somewhere. Well, sometimes that does happen. But then how useful is that? How much time has been wasted? How much money has been wasted? Has it happened before? Yes, it happens often. So if we're going to do a research methodology or a research uh, uh, um, uh, um, knowledge finding uh, 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 observation, then we have to make certain that we use that information. We can't just let it sit in a drawer somewhere because it's cost money to get that information. Brandon, why don't you read the next one, please? Information. Information to make sound decisions and managing good quality information. Information provided must be timely, accurate, relevant, adequate, and readily available. However, information to support decision making is seldom readily available in the form, quality, and quantity required by the management. Guys, I'm going to just give you 20 seconds. Look at that again. And that's the big problem with stats. You see that, guys? Tell me if you didn't get it. Look at those words that they've used there. Look at timely. And seldom readily available. You want this particular information, you ask for it, but it's not available. How many times has that happened? Come on, guys. You know what I'm talking about, correct? And as a result of it not being, think of flying a plane. Oh, my goodness. Okay. You want some information and all of a sudden you get it 10 minutes later. Maybe you're already off course. You, find you land up in Alaska instead of, I don't know, Mauritius. Okay. okay. Now I'm being a bit ridiculous, but you know what I mean. Okay. Okay, guys. So readily available and timely. That word for me is very important. Because if that information isn't timely, how relevant is it? So just keep on thinking of those questions. Okay, you don't need an answer for the question. I just want you to ask yourself the question all, all, the, all the time. Data, this is important, guys. Data is about observation. Can I ask uh, Marianne, why don't you read for us? What is more disturbing from a variety of sources and for varying quality and quantity of data? The data. Data can be defined as the individual observation of an issue. In itself, the data can be conveyed no less than information. Okay, look at that guys, the data contains no useful information. So we have to be careful of that, we have to realize that about data. What is the plural of data? Datum, datum, just so that you know, just turn the page, page 12, it's in your books, just take note. The term data is used in the singular form, the plural for data is datum. Okay, so a lot of people think datum, oh no, that's Afrikaans word for date, datum, no. <laughs> Okay, so datum is the plural of data. Okay. Statistical methods, it is only when these individual data values are collected, look at the words, collected, correlated, summarized, analyzed, and presented, that useful information for decision making results. Statistics is an important tool in transforming masses of raw data into meaningful, 
useful and usable information for decision making. The figure below illustrates this transformation process from data to information. I love that guys, it's a lovely, lovely summary, that particular paragraph. So uh, uh, hopefully it'll help you with your, with your PMA, but it's a lovely summary of why we need data. Okay, look at that guys, you've got input. I input. So you've got data, you input it, it's a process, you get statistical analysis, and from that you get an output, which is information. And from that information, we need to make a decision. How, what does the input look like? Look at that, guys. It's a raw observation. So input might be me sitting here looking at who's, okay, being ridiculous now, picking their nose, okay, for example. Or who's standing in a toilet watching who washes their hands. And they come up. It might be something as simple as that. That's raw observations. Okay, that's that's a that's a raw observation. Transformation process. What am I going to do with that pro with that with that particular process? Twenty people went into the bathroom. Five people washed their hands. Um, Fifteen people didn't. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to collate all of that data. Then I'm going to transform it from there to the output. Useful, usable uh, information. From that information, I can deduce and make decisions. Because maybe there's a particular, particular problem at our, at, our, at our workplace where people are getting sickly on, on a weekly basis and we need to do this particular um, statistical research. Guys, it might be something as simple as that. If people are sickly on a weekly basis, what happens to uh, production? It goes down. So there might be something... So often when people think about stats, they think about these elaborate things. It might be something as simple as watching who's washing their hands and who's not. Point taken? Who thinks I'm being ridiculous? Okay, because it's that simple information. You want, you want to argue the point or are you no. happy? Okay, so don't forget about the simple things that can make a big, big difference to uh, business, okay? The discipline of applied statistics, statistics can therefore be regarded as a decision support tool. I like that, guys, a decision support tool because it supports the decision processes by strengthening the quantifiable base from which to make a well informed decision love that as well so that's why we use the information so we can make a well-informed decision does it mean it's the right decision not necessarily not necessarily guys and be careful of assumptions I don't know if I've done this with you before I think I did it with you in, prior, in uh, professional writing did I ask you to close your eyes can you remember close your eyes quickly just bear with me two seconds close eyes close your eyes Vala <laughs> Merklo. Think of a tree. Get a picture of a tree in your head. Okay. You got your picture? You got a vivid picture of your tree? Open your eyes. Open your eyes. What does your tree look like, Joseph? An orange tree. Simpiwe? Green. Red. Green. A lime tree. Black. A black tree. Okay, no, that's fine. Pia? Yeah. Green tree? Yeah. Uh, my tree just, my tree just full. Full, full okay. No, a big tree. A big tree. Green. 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 An oak tree. An oak tree. Now I'm going to ask you a question. That picture that came to your mind, was it a result of an experience? Was it a result of a childhood memory? Okay. So from a questionnaire point of view, do you see how important statistical data is? If I make an assumption and I put a simple word, like in my questionnaire, think of a tree, um, my, stati my, my statistical data that I receive back from those people um, answering those questions might be void because I haven't defined what I want them to think of. So if I said to you, if I used adjectives and I said, think of a big tree that, is, that has got oranges in it, that is green, that is round at the top, then everybody would have the same kind of idea of a tree in their mind, correct? So what is very important from stats point of view? Don't make assumptions. Don't use simple words and think that everybody will, will, be, will be thinking about the same thing. Did I, did I tell you my example of this that, that, that blew me away when I was teaching kids? Did I, did, I, did I share this with you? Stop me if I have. I was teaching um, kids and one of the, uh, it was one of the first years, it was in 1993. I had black kids, colored kids, Indian kids, white kids in my class. And I made a terrible assumption and I stood up one day and we were doing creative writing and I said to them, think of the sea. What is the problem with that assumption? Everybody's been to the sea or everybody's seen the sea. 
A lot of the kids in my class in that particular year had never even seen the sea before. I couldn't even, I couldn't, couldn't even comprehend that. So what I did is I did this little exercise with them and I said, close your eyes. And I said, right, think of a line. And they came and it was the, it was the one year, it was the first year I had, you know, Brian Abana, the rugby player, I had him in my class. And um, they went up to the board and they drew, uh, and I got a, a black kid, a white kid, a colored kid, an Indian kid, and I got them to the board and I said, right, draw your pictures of lines. And the one kid drew a, a, a thin line, the other kid drew a male line and a female line. And they stood back and we chatted about their definitions of a line. And the one boy, he drew this picture and I couldn't understand what he had drawn. And it was a rectangular thing. And I said to him, I don't want to be rude, my boy, I don't quite understand what you've drawn. Can you explain it to me? And he said, no, 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 it's a line. And I said, okay, what kind of line is it? He said, no, it's a line lager. <laughs> okay, but that kind of hits the nail on the head because he was thinking of a beer, a lion beer. <laughs> okay, he wasn't thinking about Ibu Bersi, he was thinking about uh, the other line. And it's interesting because I spoke to another uh, a black friend of mine and she said often um, older black people would say to their young black children, and the reason why I'm saying black is because they would say, get me a lion, correct? Yeah. Get me a lion. So for them, the, the word lion means a beer. Because a lot of them haven't seen an Ibu Bersi or lion, correct? Isn't that interesting? And that's so important back to stats. We have to know that if we mention certain words in our questionnaires, that everybody is on the same wavelength. Those simple words are so important. Zama, you okay? You look very cross today. You're wrong. <laughs> right. Okay, guys. Um, I'm not going to go through too much here, but I just want to pick up on page 13. It says, there are further practical reasons why management students should have an appreciation of statistical methods. An understanding of the discipline should allow a manager to. Now, these are important. Can I ask Bianca, won't you read the first bullet for me? Yeah, yeah sure. Brandon, won't you read for me, please? Very important. The next one, please, Mandy. Intelligently prepare and interpret reports expressed in um, numerical terms. Um, statistical knowledge will allow a manager to assess the valid, um, validity of any statistical part. Okay, so it's no use just having all of these numbers because the numbers mean no, no, nothing to us. We have to interpret those numbers. Um, so, Shalia, why don't you read for us, please? A good source reference for invalid presentations is data. How to lie with statistics. Also, the adage of lies, damn lies, and statistics ne needs to be borne in mind in mind when examining statistical findings. That, that, I love that. Okay, I'm going to read it again. How to lie with statistics. Guys, we have to be aware that statistics can be misleading and I can indoctrinate you from a statistical point of view. Think about apartheid. Think about um, Shaka Zulu when we were doing history at school. Do you know that historians, what did they say about Shaka Zulu? I remember doing this at university. They said that Shaka Zulu was responsible for more than a million deaths in his time. And other uh, um, uh, people that were, that, that were studying population densities, etc., etc., said there weren't even a million, million people around at that particular time in that, in that area. So how was it possible that he was, was responsible for more than a million deaths? So often what happens with stati uh, misleading statistical information is we look at someone and they are, on, they are on an authority figure, correct? So think, of, uh, think about Adolf Hitler. Think about maybe a prime minister in South Africa during the apartheid years. And they're giving you information. That's why I said, because that's knowledge, correct? Mm. And we believe it. Because that person is an authority figure and they're giving it to us. And they said that these were the findings. So be careful of that, how to lie with stats. So when you get information, don't always just assume that it's correct. Ask the questions, where was that information uh, uh, acquired? How was it acquired? Okay, why was it acquired? Do you see why those questions are so important, guys? Simpiwe, point taken? Yes. Anybody think I'm talking nonsense? Le uh, Temba? No, that's not like that. Thank okay. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm saying, uh, for instance, um, there, there is a topical issue, maybe, let me say, the, the, the interview in Malema in the SAFL. And um, out of 10, 9, uh, talk positively about him and maybe his new political venture. <coughs> uh, EFF. One cannot simply take it that the majority of people uh, are supportive 
of, of this course. Maybe the question could be that only those that called were aware mm. of the fact that uh, uh, was going to be interviewed. 100 percent, 100%, 100%. And, and straight away what I would do there would do with that particular data. Let's say the score was 9 out of 10. The first question I was asked is where was the da data collated? Do you, do you see why I'm saying location is so important? Because if they went to a university, maybe, remember there's a lot of young people that are for Julius Malema, correct? So if I went to the, maybe if I went to an old age home, maybe if I went to an Afrikaans old age home, or a black old age home, or a mixed old age home, I would have got different results. Do you see why I'm talking about black, white? Not, not that I'm being racist or derogatory, yeah, but it's important from a statistical point of view, it's important to talk about those things. Okay, especially if we've got 11 official languages in South Africa. Because if I'm talking about an issue that is maybe, let's say it's an issue that imp impacts on a rural area. Okay, so rural, meaning, uh, come on, give me, give me some of the homelands. Limpopo, Transka, Kunu, okay, all of Venda, all of Ikandla, <laughs> all of those things, and I go and do my research in Santon City. How relevant is it? You see what I'm saying? So location is very, very important. Often we forget about these things. We say, oh, it was in, it was in S, uh, SAFM, or it was in financial or personal finance magazine. But how was that information acquired? Okay, so it's very, very important. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's invalid. I'm just saying ask the question. Who responded to this particular question? If there were only 10 people there, and they were all supporters of Julius Malema, then it makes sense that nine of them, actually it makes sense that 10 of them are going to agree with what Julius Malema is saying. But it, it's not representative of the whole South African situation. Agreed. And that's what we must, we must remember when we, when we talk about statistical information. So I love that. How to lie with stats. Also the adage of lies, damn lies and statistics. Sorry. Uh, Pierre? I want to ask a question. No. And, uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Can stats uh, reports be universal or objective? Universally objective. Yeah. Like, let's say certain research. Uh, findings. Uh, can they? Can, can we say that they are? They could be also me measure, measured in a in a very universal way. Okay. Or objective way. Everybody understand what 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 Pierre is asking. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm if I'm not hearing you correctly. So he's saying that if you if they've done research in America, can we take that research and apply it to the South African situation? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, I'm not going to answer the question. I want you guys to think about it. What, what, what do you think? Uh, I think it depends on a whole lot of uh, it's factors again. I think. Um, Give me another word for factors. It's, 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 yeah. it's variables. Variables, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it's, if the variables are, the, uh, are similar, uh, which which most which which I think it would most likely not be because of. Um, uh, what Tembo said? Cultures, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, how people do things there, um, multiracials, and, and, all, and a whole lot of other uh, uh, things like that. Uh, so I think it will depend on all those variables. 100%. Anybody want to add anything else? You seem like you. You don't want to add anything. It just seems like you've got something to. No, yeah, I want to just exactly say this is not very much. The exactly the same thing. Now, funny enough, what Pierre's talking about, it's a very pertinent point because South Africa is regarded as a second world country correct mm -hmm. second world you understand from an infrastructure point of view we haven't got it so we we're not quite a first world country yet. there's a lot of debate around this but invariably we regard it as a second world sometimes even a third world country but let's call it a second world country and then we get compared to first world country countries like Australia mm -hmm. and um, America and a lot of economists are now coming out and say no it's unfair you can't do that so when they talk about the petrol price going up or the CPR, they say a lot of economists, uh, funny enough it was in the, in the news last week, economists were coming up and they, they were, uh, this was in the economics, so the, uh, SA Economics magazine, and they were saying that, yes, but in South Africa we're still better off because we're paying X amount for, for a litre of petrol, and in Europe they're paying X amount of petrol. And they, uh, one economist came to the floor and said, ah, you cannot compare, you're not comparing apples with apples. Remember a variable? Yeah. So remember at school, if we said, Sushya, what is X plus Y? X, Y. X, Y. What is A plus B? <laughs> <laughs> a, B. 
A, B, okay? I'm going to put it into simple terms. I'm going to tell you what you've just said. You've said an apple plus a pear equals a banana. That's what you've said. I said X plus Y, uh, and you said X, Y. So I'm saying an apple plus a banana equals a pear. You said, I said, I think I said A plus B, and you said A, B. So you said an apple plus a pear is equal to, a, I don't know, a pineapple. Does that make sense? No. In mathematics, we know that we can only add like terms. So we have to compare apples with apples, and that's where that, where, that, where that situation comes from. So to come back to your point, Pierre, from a statistical point of view, I would, only, I would only relate stats that are related to the South African situation because we've got a, such a unique uh, um, situation in this particular country. But with that said, statisticians will use stats that they get from other countries and they'll try and relate it back to the South African situation because maybe there's just no information in South Africa around that particular group. You with me? But there's a lot of argument around this particular point. My personal viewpoint, it shouldn't be used. Because how relevant is it to the South African situation? This particular module talks about it. They say that if you're doing questionnaires in the South African situation, how many official languages? 11. It's like doing a research project overseas where you're looking at Greek, Polish, American, um, uh, French, uh, 11 other languages and you're collating all of that research together. You see how problematic it, uh, it, can, it can be, okay? So I would try, as far as possible, from a statistician point of view, use information that is relevant for that community. Because as uh, Temba said, culture is important, environment is important, location is important. So now we're talking about location, South Africa and America. Two totally different scenarios, okay? Google that, there was a very good article around economists comparing the South African fuel price with uh, uh, um, Australia's fuel price and Europe's fuel, uh, fuel, fuel price. How relevant is that? Okay. All right, guys. And uh, that last one, communicate effectively with statistical analysis. Well, that there comes back to close your eyes, think of a tree. Communicating effectively. Don't make assumptions that because you understand a particular word, everybody is going to understand that particular word. We have to make sure that if there's, a uh, if there's a word, and it could be a problematic word, a simple word like grey, everybody has to have the same understanding of grey if they're filling in that particular questionnaire. Does that make sense? Okay. I remember teaching as a, in the old TD, remember Transvaal Education Department, and um, I just got married and I had to fill in forms because I got a housing loan. So I was very excited. I got a housing loan. It equated to, I think, 300 rand a month. So I was very excited about this 300 rand a month, and I was filling in a questionnaire. And um, they were very pedantic about semantics. When I say they, the government at the time, the Transvaal Education Department. And um, I was filling in the questionnaire and it said there, um, if you are a married man, and then they had a little asterisk there and it said definition of married man. And uh, you turned over the page and definition of a married man was a man that was married. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and an unmarried man, a man that was not married. Okay. But once again, I thought that was pedantic, but from a stats point of view, you actually have to be pedantic like that. So that there's a clear idea of what is meant by that particular term. Okay, makes sense. Okay. You keep on looking at me like I'm. Um, no. uh, if, if you disagree with anything that I'm saying, Bianca, you're right? Zama? No. You're okay. okay. All right, guys. <laughs> Who's heard of a guy by the name of, uh, just, just uh, I'm thinking about um, uh, lies, damn lies, and listening to authority figures and how authority figures can mislead you. Have you heard about Tony Milgram? Tony Milgram. He was a psychologist in the 1960s. And this comes to mind as well when we talk about stats, damn stats, and how authority figures can indoctrinate us. And we look at um, apartheid, we look at uh, 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 Adolf Hitler, how much indoctrination did he do with the youth? And you look at a whole lot of bad people, even Robert Mugabe to a, to a, to a certain extent, okay? How misleading are those authority figures from a stat point of view? And Tony Milgram, what he did in the 1960s is he wanted to see if it was possible, listen to the statement, that good people, was it possible that good people could do bad things? Interesting, eh? So think about apartheid. Think about uh, uh, Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. Do you believe that all white people in apartheid were bad? I don't. Do you believe that all German people in Nazi Germany were bad? No. A lot of them were fighting for the rights of the Jewish people. But people don't, don't realize that. So what, what uh, Tony Milgram said is, he said, well, what do you want to do? Show 
is that was it possible that good people could do bad things? And what he did is he got, let's say me, off the street, I didn't know anything, and he got uh, Mandy in, and Mandy was an actress. And Mandy would come in, she was in on the whole gig, I knew nothing. And what would happen, I would sit down at a chair, and it would be explained to me that Mandy would go into a room, and um, I was gonna ask Mandy a question. And if Mandy got the question wrong, I would press a button and that button would shock Mandy. Okay? Everybody understand the experiment? And they were collating, this was an observation, so they were, they were generating statistical data from this. And what he found is he found that the person would press the button and Mandy would go, ow! Well, she was an actress, obviously, so she was playing along. She'd go, ow! And as the more questions she got wrong, the, more, the, the, the greater the severity of the shocks. So eventually, this person was pressing the button and Mandy wasn't going out, she was screaming. And I realized that by pressing that button, I was actually hurting her. And you know what he found? His observation showed, remember from a statistical point of view, his observation showed that 50% of the people would shock the person to death just because there was an authority figure standing next to them saying, it's okay, I'll take responsibility for it. So think about apartheid, think about Nazism, Guys, I watched something on TV the other day, a little short uh, uh, um, uh, episode on Krakatoa. You know, Krakatoa is where, they, where, where the Nazis um, gassed a lot of the Jews. Can you imagine the German soldier pressing that button and gassing, I don't know, a thousand people at once? I, I, can't, I, I just cannot believe that there's so much evil in the world. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm very naive. But Tony Milgram, that's what he was basically trying to show. Is it possible that good people can do bad things just because there's an authority figure saying, it's okay, I'll take the responsibility. Hurt, simpiwe, I'll take the responsibility for it. Isn't that scary? Okay, so that's what observations are all about. Okay, but it also, Emmanuel? Uh, can you relate to a bad and mistake? How can you relate to a bad and mistake? Bad and mistake? Yeah. Well, before I could relate the two, I would have to get a clear definition of what do you mean by bad and what do you mean by mistake. So we would first, for me, it's very important that we define that. Okay. Because when we define bad and when we define mistake, then we can start, we can see a clear differentiation between the two and we can start answering the question. Yeah, because you said that can bad people, can good people do bad things, can good, uh, good people do bad things, you know, because for example, now, if a good person does something that is not right, maybe he's not doing it intentionally, you know, so how do you relate that? Hmm? Point taken. Point taken. It's a, it's a difficult thing and that's why from a statistical point of view there are always people who are going to come up and say, I disagree with that. It should have been done in this way. Okay, so once again it's relating back to semantics, those words. So if good people can do bad things, can bad people also do good things? Hmm. Because why I say that? Because okay, let's take it into point of view as a leader. You know, for example, let's say this leader is a bad person. You know, I don't know. Then, so like the good leader, how are you going to relate to that person? For example, now if he does a bad thing, I mean mistake. Hmm. You know, maybe not intentionally. Hmm. And and we and we're talking about terms now, but we have to define what is bad and whose definition of bad is that. Because that can be indoctrinating in itself. Are you with me? It's bad not to fill in your tax return. I don't know. It's bad not to... <laughs> okay, all of these things. But who's defining bad? Who's defining good? Yes? Because uh, to me, well, according to people, what they always say, every leader is bad. You know, because I don't know. According to people's opinion. Okay, okay. Be, be careful of that once again. According to people's opinion. Because according to whose opinion? Not everyone agrees with that. Okay. So remember, in your PMA, you can't say that you can't make a statement like that. You need to elaborate on it. Okay. So um, even if you said most people, you could you could maybe say according to this article. So you would have to source a particular article where they've mentioned something like that, and then you can back up your statement. But yes, guys, stats. A lot of people see things. Stats are factual. They're not necessarily factual. Stats are highly problematic, and that's why I want to bring it to the fore. Okay. Right, guys, um, just if you turn the page, it says statistical terminology. Very, very important.